Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the next tutorial in the Coding Geometry Dash in Java series. In the last tutorial, what we did was we got to the point where we can now have a menu, but the menu isn't functioning. We have the tabs and we have the ability to switch between the containers by changing up some of our code, but we can't do that through the actual menu. So in this tutorial, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding the functionality to that menu so that we have a fully functioning tabbed menu system where we can select multiple objects. And then by the end of this video, we'll be in a position to where we can start adding the spikes to our scene and then work on that triangle collision detection. I'm gonna draw out some of the things that we're gonna do in this tutorial and then we're gonna take a look at how that's all gonna work and then we will code it right after that. So let's get to it. So real quick, before I start drawing out some diagrams and stuff, I just wanna show you what we will be getting to. So we're gonna have it so that every time you click a button and switch to a new button, it actually switches the current active button. And then what we're also going to have is if you click onto the different tabs, it will switch to whichever tab you need to be on. And then we're also going to add in this background to the uh, level editor scene just to make it look a little bit nicer. But let's see how this all is going to work real quick. We'll draw it out and then we will code it to make it actually work like this. I've drawn up a little diagram of what our tab system currently looks like. We have these different tabs and then we also have the different buttons inside. And so I think it's important to distinguish this one factor, which is there is only ever one active button and there is only ever one active tab. And so using this fact, we can determine, we can use something called an immediate mode GUI which is we're using some of the principles because it's the simplest form of creating a graphical user interface that just makes sense to me. And I hope it makes sense to you guys. The basic concept is, okay, so you have this GUI and then you have a hot button and the hot button is whatever button's currently active and then you have a hot tab. And so say the user clicks onto this button, then all of a sudden we have this button become the hot button and what we do is we say, okay, this button is now just active, but it's not hot. And so if we see a button that's active and not hot, and then we take away its status as active, we remove it, and then we add in just a regular, we, we change it to inactive. And then we can do the same thing for all the tabs. And so basically we just keep track of whatever these hot buttons and hot tabs are because we know there's only ever going to be one at any given frame. And so this basically just means that it's really easy to check and see. And so what we'll have is we'll have the main container, which is this guy who has control over every single button and tab. And he'll be looping over every single one at each state. And if he sees, um, and he'll also have uh, this hot button and hot tab variables, which will be containing a game object. And then basically if he just sees that one of these is selected, but it's not the hot button, then it's just gonna say this is selected equals false. Really simple concept, but it's really profound. And I think it's really profound because just getting this concept across that inside GUIs, you only ever have one state, which is which button is pressed and which tab is pressed. And realizing that there's only ever one state can allow you to do some really complex graphical user interfaces that are actually operating on some really basic principles. All right, so first things first, we're in main container. And what I'm gonna do is change this to the zero tab because it was just bothering me being on the third tab. Uh, so now we're just having these buttons available. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to modify our menu item class a little bit because it's now going to need a reference to this menu item or this main container class because we're going to be using that reference to basically say whenever it gets selected, oh, I'm the hot button now to the main container. So we'll have this private variable main container and I'm just going to call this parent container because that's really what it is and then over here we will add into its constructor a main container variable and this will be the parent and then right down here i'm going to say this dot parent container equals parent so that's going to raise one more error so if we go down to here we will go and instead of doing like parent container dot copy we're just going to do parent container because we actually do want to pass around a reference to the object we don't want to pass around copies we only want one main container so this will make sure that we're only passing around the reference which means sort of like pointing to hey this is the one container we have so that every single menu item has that same reference and then that's also going to change some things in the main container class so we will go over here and we have an error in here so we just add in this 
because this is the main container. This is in the main container class. And that will also make sure that it works properly for every single other one of the tab objects. This is when we're creating the tabs too. This is inside of add tab objects. And once we pass in this as the parent, it should be good for all the menu items. Next thing we're gonna wanna do is we will add a function. I'm gonna add it just all the way down at the bottom because it's a very minimal function. We'll say public void set hot button and it will take in a game object, obj. And I think, did we add the variables? I don't think we did. No, we did not. So <laughs> let's also add in a couple of variables. So we'll have private game object. And this is hot button. And I'm going to initialize this to null. And then we'll have private game object, hot tab. And this is also initialized to null. So if we go back down to this set hot button, we'll just say this dot hot button equals that obj that was passed in and then what we can do now is we can go into menu item class and if we have in this update method if we get a click then we will say right here this dot parent container dot set hot button this and we will pass it itself i'm sorry actually we won't pass it this we'll pass it game object because game object is this uh component's parent also if you copy this and then move it above this other uh if statement I think that's a little bit better because right now what we were doing was we were just checking the bounds every single time to see if the, uh, the mouse was inside the bounds. But I think we should only check that if the mouse was pressed because then it's the only time it's an issue. So just a tiny little optimization. And then we're going to be using some very similar things for the other part too. So now that we have the hot button able to be set every time it's clicked on, what we need to do is modify our update loop because it needs to know you know, if we're hitting something that's not actually the hot button. So this is actually really simple. We'll just say menu item, menu item equals g dot get component. This is where we're looping through and updating all the uh, menu items, all the buttons for the current tab too. And then we'll just say uh, menu item dot class. So we're just getting that uh, component. And then we say if g is not the hot button and menu item dot is selected. So this is a case where we have something that's, you know, not the hot button and it's selected and it shouldn't be. We'll just say menu item dot is selected equals false. And that should fix our issue of buttons not working properly. So now if I click this, I can place a few. If I change the object, I can place a few and I can click back to this one. So that's our first bug solved and our first big part. And the tab system is gonna work very similarly, do almost exactly the same thing. Next, what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna go up to here and right now we have this current tab button. I'm just going to change this to hot tab. So actually instead of doing this, uh, we already have this guy. I'm just gonna change that to hot tab because we sort of were doing the same thing and I'm also gonna make this private. There's no sense in it being public. And then we're going to go down here and just fix all these, change any instance of current tab to hot tab. And I believe it's just there and in the update and in the draw loop. So, and that should fix it. Just make sure it runs properly still. It's all good. Um, and then we're going to add in a new class. And this is going to be our tab item, very similar to our menu item. So similar, in fact, that we can actually go into menu item and I'm going to copy all of this and then we just have to change just a couple things. So instead of having three sprites here, we'll just have one sprite. And instead of taking in three sprites here, we're just gonna take in, or two sprites, we'll just take in sprite, sprite, and change this to tab item. And then down here, we will change these to this dot sprite equals sprite I, this is very very similar we just have a couple different things we draw it a little bit differently and just have to worry about it a little bit less next what we do is we want to add first of all we want to make sure this is extending component too so let's go up here so make sure that's extending component i'm gonna say alt enter whoops alt enter and then import that from jade and then implement those methods okay and we don't really have to worry about either of those because we're not going to be copying this or serializing this. Um, yeah, we should be good. Then let's do an at override and do public void update double delta time. And let's go back into our menu item class once again because, like I said, these are very, very similar classes. Oops. And then I'm going to copy everything inside the update loop, go back to tab item, paste all that, 
and then we're going to remove every single line except the last two lines inside the body of this loop because all we care about is is select is true and then we're going to change this to set hot tab for the game object and so we'll go into main container and instead of having set hot button we'll add another function called set hot tab game object obj and this dot hot tab equals obj very very similar almost exactly the same thing um, we're going to add this tab item component to all our tabs too in just a moment and let's implement one more method this is going to be our draw method so we'll say override public void draw graphics 2d g2 and this draw method is going to do just a couple different things so instead of having two sprites like we do for the um, menu item class, what I did was I actually drew them just half transparent or fully transparent, which is what it seems like the actual game is doing too, because um, they were just a little bit lighter. So if it's selected, we want to full, full transparency, which means we're just going to draw the sprite.image, and we're just going to draw it at x, y, width, height, and a null image observer. Otherwise, we're going to draw at half transparency, so we're going to have to do our whole alpha composite thing. Um, I always have to look back at my old code when I'm doing this too, so don't feel bad if you can't just memorize this stuff. I don't memorize it. I always look back at a reference because there's some things that you do so like a few times that it's okay to have to do that, um, to have to look at it every time you go. So we're going to do alpha composite dot source over and pass it our alpha variable. So alpha composite or not quite like that alpha composite dot source over and our alpha variable then what we're going to do is we could say g2 dot set composite to that ac our alpha composite then we draw the image I'm just going to copy this and paste it there and then we repeat uh, these steps so copy all those except we are not redeclaring this and then we will change this to 1.0f and we will change this so that we're not declaring that yeah and that should be good i don't know if we have to do this again but we'll leave it there just in case <laughs> just in case and so that should be good for drawing the tabs now um let's go in and it's not going to look right uh, you'll notice so they still look the same why is that well if we go into our main container class our draw method right now, what it's doing is it's just saying g.draw g2, and they all have a sprite component. They also don't have that tab item component. So what we're going to do is instead of adding the sprite component, which we're doing right here inside of our init function, um, instead of doing that, let's do a tab item. Item equals a new tab item, and it takes in x, y, which we have right there, width, height, which is constants, dot tab width and constants dot tab height takes in a sprite which is current tab and then it takes in container which is this and then we'll say obj dot add component current tab so take away the sprite component add that component let's try it again they should all be half transparent and they are not oh because i'm adding in current tab right here i'm still not adding an item so make sure you're adding the tab item not current tab okay now they should all be half transparent. There we go. You see they're all half transparent. Um, let's also do ourselves a favor and we'll say this dot hot tab. Since we're on tab zero, it's gonna be this dot tabs dot yeah, this dot tabs dot get zero. Which we do. Oh, we're we're gonna say, I'm sorry, this dot hot tab dot get component tab item dot class dot is selected equals true. So we're gonna set it to is selected since we're also on it. That way our first tab is dark and the rest of the tabs are not okay and if we click on one of these it works it's changing right now but it's not setting the other ones back and that's because we need to go into our main container update loop and do something exactly like this except for our tabs so we'll say for game object g and this dot tabs and then we'll just say tab item I, uh, tab item equals g.getComponent tab item dot class then we'll say if g does not equal hot tab and uh, tab item dot is selected so if it's selected and it's not the hot tab then we just want to set it to uh, its selection to false so we'll say is selected equals false and then we go back in and it 
grays back out so that we can click back onto it. And all the buttons work just like they should because we didn't really change anything, which is great about the functionality we chose for this. Um, we do get this little error. That's really easy to fix too though. Let's just go into our snap to grid class, which is up here. So snap to grid. And then um, we have it saying if it's less than the button offset, let's change that to tab offset in the Y direction. Run this one more time and we shouldn't have that problem anymore. So click here, uh, click here, click here, click here. It doesn't work. So only when you're above it, which is good too, because then it doesn't let us place anything below the ground. So that's all that good. We have a fully functioning tabbed menu system. You can click any of them. Uh, these still look a little bit weird. We may fix those um, in a little bit, which shouldn't be too hard. Instead of adding a sprite component, we would add something else because you see they're getting drawn twice too. So because they have two components that are drawing different things, uh, we will fix that in a little bit. But we can add things and do all that stuff. So that's good. Now what I want to do is just add the backgrounds back in really quick. It's really simple. Um, doesn't take too much. Let's go into our level scene class and then we have this function in it backgrounds. I'm going to copy this. So just copy that and then go into level editor scene and literally paste that function in. And then at the end of our init function, uh, we will say init backgrounds. And instead of having ground up here, uh, just like we did with the other one, we'll take ground out of here and add it in to our init backgrounds, which it already is. So we'll just take ground out of here completely and take that out. And I think there's one more reference. Is there no more references? No. And then instead of doing this, let's take that ground out. Okay, now we're all good. And then one more thing I want to do, change the number of backgrounds to five because we only need five now since we're not going to be scrolling. We're just going to have the backgrounds be static. And then in order to get the backgrounds to be static, I'm going to sort of add in a little bit of a field to our parallax background class. And instead of adding, uh, passing in the backgrounds, we'll just say null. So give that null and then give that null whenever you're passing in the backgrounds. And then we'll go into our parallax background class. And we're basically going to say, um, if our backgrounds are null, then we're just going to return. So we, we won't update them. We won't do the update loop, which means they won't be moving. And then if we run them again, you see we have our backgrounds and they're all good. This is a little bit weird too. Uh, easy fix for that as well. Go back into the level editor scene class. And instead of giving it Y of BG sprite.height, which I don't know why we did that in the first place, we just do ground.transform.position.y. Um, really simple. And it says it requires a float. Uh, or an int, just change that to int. And then if we run this one more time, that should be fixed now. Okay, so that's all good. And then we will go to our draw, because there we go. And then instead of drawing um, this color, we're just gonna say constants.bg color. And that should be it. And now we are completely working. If this looks a little bit too dark for you to, feel free to change the color. I'm fine with that. It won't hurt my feelings. <laughs> But we have this completely working now, so we can add in all the different blocks that we need to. If we need to add in some spikes, we can add in the spikes now. So next priority, next thing on our list is to actually add these triangle bounds so that these triangles actually do stuff. And then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to add in the rest of the functionality so that you can hit like escape and actually get out of placing blocks and then select blocks, move them around the screen and stuff like that. So that's what we have to look forward to. We're really close, just about done. And portals are like the last thing we have to do after that is just changing the state of the player, the image of the player and all that stuff. So I hope you guys like this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks. See ya.